Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm addressing a topic that bothers me. I suspect it bothers you. It's pores. Now, literally, there isn't a patient that comes to see me that in some shape or form does not dislike their pores. And in fact, usually as their skin gets better and they get closer to the mirror, pores loom ever larger. So in order to talk about pores and how we can go about preventing enlargement, how we can go about treating them if they're there, we have to understand what exactly they are. So a pore is literally a circular opening from a tube in your hair follicle that's connected to an oil gland or a sebaceous gland. So basically they're the window on your oil glands. Now they are much denser in your T-zone. So on the forehead, nose and chin than they are on other parts of the body. There are 10 times as many oil glands potentially here as there are say on your arm. So at puberty, hormones switch on the oil glands and boom, traffic starts to happen. So that means oil is passing through the pore onto the surface of your skin and potentially mixing with things like dead skin cells, with makeup, with skincare products that clog up, creating problems because the pores become more prominent. So who's bothered by the pores? Well, as I said, pretty much everybody, but particularly those with oily skin where the pores are prominent all over the face, or the most common skin type, combination skin, where there are pores very visible here, but often the cheek is normal and can even be dry. So if we're gonna think about how to tackle them, how to deal with them, or how to adapt to them, we have to think about why they are visible in the first place. So as we said, more oil equals more traffic and passage through the pore, dead skin cells, then other things that influence it are things like our skin's elasticity. So if you think about the pore as being a floppy tube with a funnel at the end, as we age, we lose collagen and elastin. And in particular, that sagging with loss of elastin can cause the pore to flop widely open. So that's why sunscreen and sun behavior is incredibly important if big pores are a problem for you. The final situation where pores can become more problematic is when we fiddle with them. The number of times I've seen a patient who literally couldn't step away from the congestion around their nose, they tried the strips, they'd had a little fiddle, and eventually they became so involved with their pores that they ended up stretching it through manipulation. So those are the four situations where we see pores becoming more prominent. So let's think how we can prevent it. So when it comes to prevention, the first thing is to look at your everyday basics and make sure you're doing no harm. So alarm bells ring for me when I look at patients' uh, products and see that they're using things that contain ingredients like coconut oil, isopropyl, myristate, and olive oil, things that are known to be comedogenic. Comedogenic just means likely to clog up. Pores. Now, there's no absolute way of measuring this tendency of any one ingredient, and sometimes it isn't any one ingredient, it's the combination of everything together. Products labeled non comedogenic means that the product has a good chance of not aggravating your pores, and it's a good place to start. But in the end, you know your skin best, and if something seems to be clogging up your pores, it's best to make a change. Red flags for me include things like oil cleansers and balm cleansers, but ultimately the main concern is products that you leave on this skin, so pay close attention to the formulation of your moisturizer and SPF. On the topic of sunscreen, it's often a problematic skincare product and it's one of the reasons why people tend to skip it, but I do think there are lots of great options that are indeed non-comedogenic out there on the market, so it really is worth doing your research. Mineral sunscreens tend to be less clogging in my experience. And if you're really concerned, look for a sunscreen that's amped up with an anti-blemish ingredient like niacinamide to really put your worries aside. So the next way to think about prevention is by reducing the forces that would damage your skin's elasticity. Now, collagen, we have lots of, um, it's one of the most common proteins in the skin as part of our scaffolding, which keeps skin nice and thick and robust. But elastin is like skin's lycra. So it gives it its snap um, to ping back into shape. Now, the main problem with elastin is that we don't make more of it once we hit puberty. So what you've got 
you have to hang on to. So the recipe for that is, you guessed it, broad spectrum sunscreen, because that means it's got high levels of UVA protection. So on a winter's day, you aren't getting any UVB, really, if you live somewhere like the UK, but there's always UVA around and that goes deeply into the skin and it damages your elastin, it stops it being so snappy. So whilst we think about sagging in terms of skin losing its tightness here, Think about it in terms of your pores as well. Saggy skin does not support your pores and keep them perky. Other things to think about, which I will cover in the next video, are your actives. That's vitamins A, B3, and C, which are key to preserving skin's elasticity as well. Antioxidants also have a role to play in preventing the increased visibility of a clogged pore. Part of the reason why whiteheads or closed comatones become black is due to oxidation of lipids in sebum, which is part of what's clogging up and making the pores more visible. So antioxidants reduce that power that forces the, the closed comatone, which is white colored, to black. Obviously white and black, black's more visible. So antioxidants like vitamin C, really important. Next step, don't squeeze. I said it before, I'm gonna say it again, don't squeeze. Nothing good ever came of squeezing. However, for that moment of satisfaction, the long-term potential to distort the architecture of your pores, resulting in permanently enlarged and visible discrete pores, is just not worth it. And the final thing to think about with prevention is always our diet. So what can we eat to encourage clear, healthy, minimal pores. So I think the two things worth considering are vitamin A, which may have some potential to influence our activity of our oil glands, and also omega-3s, which ensure that the quality of the sebum flows freely as opposed to clogging up. So I think olive oil, not brie. Never worth taking anything in excess, but do ensure that you're eating plenty of foods that are enriched with those two things. So there you have it, the start of the pores series, getting down and dirty with what's going on beneath the surface. And next week, we're gonna tackle actives to help improve the appearance of your pores. I hope you'll join me for that. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.